Hey guys, I'm excited about this month's release. This was particularly difficult to do, especially since I did everything in Dungeon Draft. I leveraged a ton of creative uses of art and Dungeon Draft features to really, I think, push them to the limits, but the result is, I think, pretty great. So in just a second, I'm going to give everyone a tutorial on how to make things look underwater in Foundry. This is basically a longer version of the YouTube short I released last week, and feel free to check that out and then stick around to see the rest of the assets in this release. Uh, but we've got new dynamic assets, docks that sound like real docks as your players walk over them, a neighborhood of scuttled and sunken ships that are now inhabited, a huge new version of the frigate, uh, dynamic shipwrecks that use overhead tiles and multi-phase tiles to transform instantly into different uh, livable spaces or sunken wrecks. And this was all inspired by Mist Shore from Waterdeep, but with a bit of a twist. So if you're running or planning on running anything sea-based in your campaign, I am sure you'll find something useful in here. And with that, let's first get into the tutorial and then we'll jump into the assets. So jump around to the timestamps that interest you the most. And in the meantime, let's go. Okay, so to show you how to um, make things underwater, we're gonna start with the normal scene. This is just uh, components from the new release. It's you know, a couple of prefabs of, um, you know, the ruined versions of these wreck pieces. There's some of the flotsam uh, floating around. And then there's just a, a uh, this background tile is just actually from the desert release. It's just a dune, right? So that's our starting point. I am going to turn on token attachers quick edit mode since these are prefabs and I have to be able to manipulate them. And then what you want to do is install the nuts and bolts module. It's new. It's free and it's got a bunch of macros in it. If you open up the macros and you search for underwater, so it starts off like this, you search for under and you'll find this token magic effects underwater texture and this FX master underwater as well. Just drag those into your uh, macro bar for right now. And then what we're gonna do is with our background layer turned on, we're gonna hit control A and it selects everything there. Then we're going to use this token magic effects filter. You have to have that module installed and active. And when you do and you click it, it will apply this special filter to everything. Let's look at what that is. This is really a, a modified version of the distortion filter that comes with token magic effects. I made a bunch of changes to all the different elements of it. And the biggest change is instead of calling out the normal distortion pattern that comes with that module, I'm calling out a specific one that I built that is uh, part of this shipwreck release and it's you know underwater coral and what it does is it just really subtly and in interesting ways applies uh, that image on top of other tiles so you can see it just looks like maybe there's seaweed or you know just distortion kind of randomly on different parts of these elements as if the wood really is you know has been rotted from the ocean now this component right here, I actually don't want to have, have this effect because it should just meld in with the rest of the background. So I'm just going to use the delete filters. This is another filter I provide. It's also in the token magic effects compendium, but that just gets rid of that. So we're going to have this merge with the rest of the background here later. Now I also have to make sure I do the foreground tiles. See, these are all still normal. So if I go to foreground, hit control A, press my token magic effects filter again, now I've turned all the masts and everything else into their underwater versions. So next up, and the last thing, is we just want to change the entire environment to look like it's underwater. That's where this filter comes in. So if you have FX Master installed, then what this is is a, is a modified version of some filters that I built there. And the first thing it's going to do is call out bubbles. And I made modifications to that, so it's a lot more subtle. And then it's going to change the... Um, the color and the saturation of the environment in general to something that's more of like a, you know blue green and and then it's going to apply the underwater option with a couple of modifications to that as well so it's not quite so dramatic and if i execute that macro it'll immediately change the rest of the environment so that it's starting to look underwater now everything will have a slightly wavy effect uh, you can see it if you look at the edges of the the scene here but everything in it including tokens will uh, wave you'll see these little subtle bubbles coming up uh, every once in a while and uh, yeah and that's it that's as easy as it is to make a scene look like it's underwater hope you guys have fun with it 
Okay, so let's talk about where to find the new content. First, we have introduced a new publicly accessible module called Nuts and Bolts, and we've consolidated all of our journals and all of our macros into the single module. So it's small, it's available for free. Hopefully by the time you see this, it'll be in the Foundry directory, but either way, you'll have a link to install it. And whether you're using Scene Packer or Molinet, your scene should automatically search for this module for any relevant journals and macros and import them into your world. And this should vastly consolidate your BaileyWiki compendiums and also simplify your workflows for like finding and importing macros and journals that you need, whether you're on our, our uh, free module that's available public or whether you're on uh, uh, the Patreon modules. As for the content itself, you've got most of the new stuff in District 2, the docs. You'll find everything in the actor and scene compendiums for that district. You also have new assets in the towns module in the actor compendium specifically, and specifically assets that you would use for something like Miss Shore, like, like a tavern that's really just a tent that changes locations every night. Um, but they'll, they, they think belong better in the market assets inside the towns module. So that's why they're in there. And finally, you have a new version of the frigate, the frigate occupied which can be found in the premium module in the actor compendium. You can just search for occupied, for example, um, or it's in the new releases. Okay, so now let's run through the new assets and how they work. So first you have flotsam, both buried and floating style. The floating style has a token magic effects filter applied. So make sure you have that turned on and active if you wanna see the, the shadow cast into the water there. Uh, all of the flotsam is powered by multi-face tiles that lets you change the type and also resize or rotate as you like using control token, which uses token attacher. It's available as individual tiles or as a prefab in your actor compendium for district two, the docs, just drag it in and turn on quick edit mode and you can use multi-face tiles to change them as you like. Next, we have two different bows. The first one can be entered by players it uses multi-face tiles. You can change the background and foreground tiles to turn it from a wreck into a tavern, for example, or you can make an empty version. Don't forget to adjust any walls or lights depending on what choice you choose. Next, you have the masts. You have straight and angled versions. These include multi-face tiles also to quickly cycle through different amounts of damage or just shapes um, in with or without a crow's nest. Notice that you have these bow sprits that also can be changed. They don't have their own prefabs, but you can find the tiles in the tile picker, or they also come attached to other prefabs, as we'll see. Next, you have different shipwrecks, all of which have multiple options for background tiles, always including a wreck or empty option, and some with multiple options like this torture room or this garden. The ones called Shipwreck Side, since they are on their sides, include a cultist temple, a hideout, another home, and a warehouse. The Shipwreck Small prefabs include more homes. You'll notice some wrecks have extra patch tiles on them. These are also available as tiles or prefabs with multi-face powering them since they're all the same dimensions. You can use these not only in these assets, but in other places where you just want to apply kind of patchwork. Finally, the sterns are both two-story. One converts from a wreck to a casino and a home, while the other converts to a meeting room, office, and sort of a noble's bedroom. There are more things in this scene to find also. Notice the new ocean terrain covering the background, and these new rock tiles and coral reef tiles that can all be resized and sort of placed anywhere. Also lurking underwater are these new shipwreck tiles. They can go over water or underwater using the new macros that I showed you about in the tutorial and that you can find in the new nuts and bolts compendium. Speaking of new macros, make sure you find the new macros in the nuts and bolts compendium. You'll also find the FX master uh, macro in there as well. In the bottom margin of the scene, you'll find the matte powered docs prefabs. These, this prefab, it's essentially one, it can be dragged onto any scene and then you release the attachments from token attacher from the control token here. And then you can just copy and paste them and put them really in any configuration you want. And what happens when a player walks over any of them, you can see the, the rules here. It'll randomly 
um, play a set of sounds like they're walking on real docks. This platform doesn't have a prefab, but you can click into it and see its file location in the Towns module in case you want it. I used it in a new scene called The Crib. And then the next we have two new tent prefabs. So these have roofs and the first has a tavern interior, uh, while the second is just sort of a generic tent that you can recolor any way that you want. You can kind of put anywhere and you can resize it and change the height and width of the control token. That'll resize the whole thing. And these prefabs are in the Towns module. Just search for tent or docks in that module or even market and you'll find them. And finally, we have this large outdoor oven. It's got some cool animations, lighting design. I spent way too much time designing this little thing, but it just goes in so many different environments. I think it would go really well from a dungeon to a town to, um, you know, a, a kitchen somewhere. So you can find this also in the Towns module just by searching oven. Taking a tour of the new scenes, which are all in the District 2 docs compendium for scenes we have first up dark toe so this is our take on the infamous pirate town from critical role but using entirely the set of new tiles and other tiles from from other sets some of these tiles have been tinted to show you how you can like just kind of customize these as you like and this map features like a four-story tavern in an inn a lighthouse and lots of other places to explore next are the dock slums in both module and optimized formats. So that means that the modular formats just mean that you can see where the tiles are that contributed to that. These are fashioned, like I said, after Mist Shore from Waterdeep. So as legend goes, there was a battle here and the sunken boats were scuttled and converted to sort of ramshackles and hovels. And there's a tavern that is really nothing more than a tent that moves around every night, an outside cooking stove for the residents, a large ship that's now occupied by local mercenaries and a home occupied by a mage that searches the local waters for treasure. Notice that the ship is a new frigate prefab in the premium module. It's called Frigate Occupied, which is not it's not seaworthy, but can be used to explore. Um, there's This is usable as the Kraken's Folly, which really goes into the Mist Shore uh, neighborhood. You know, it's now a derelict vessel turned apartment complex. Um, but hey, you know, what's stopping your players from clearing it out and reconstituting it for their own open sea adventure, right? And then just switch over to the, the main frigate and you're off to the races. And there's also a device uh, that, as the lore goes, the, the mage uses to search the water surrounding the, the city. It's, it's the apparatus of Qualish, which is um, really a hidden tile here. You'll also notice in the non-optimized version this removable damage tile in case you want to use the base map in another scene of your own design, but without the damage, you can do that. So this is a great jumping off point for players to dive into the depths of the surrounding water for an underwater adventure. Um, so our next scene is called The Crib. It's an arena, essentially, of suspended planks surrounded by shipwrecks. There are two small buildings that can be entered on this map, in case you want to hide something there or put NPCs in there. And, uh, and then next up is the underwater wreck. So this leverages the new token magic effects and FX master filters, and it uses the wrecked versions of the assets. So you can let your players explore it and then fight their way out, whatever you'd like, and even customize it. Finally, we have Shipwreck Reef. It's just another example to show you how to use these assets and how they link together. So this is just a shipwreck, a couple shipwrecks actually off the shore, just showing off the new shoreline asset. And you can just double click into that to see the tiles there as well. So that's it. A lot of stuff in this release to use and explore. I hope you guys get some utility out of it. Let me know in the comments if this gives you other ideas on things you'd like to see me build in the future. I have some really cool things coming up next month for those of you that are Patreons. Um, as all, also, a, a pretty big, pretty big news for those of you who are Dungeon Draft users as well. So looking forward to releasing that, but uh, love to see you guys on Discord and let me know there or here. One, if you see any bugs uh, with this release, there's always bugs that we have to go back and fix. Uh, just report them on my Discord. And then again, if you have ideas, love to hear them. In the meantime, everybody have fun making your maps.